Okay, everybody, welcome. Uh, let me first of all uh, mute everybody. You want to speak? I mute. It. Please unmute yourself. And then I will start the share screen. Uh, today I did, I hope we can have more discussion. So I will be doing a much shorter presentation before we start uh, discussion. Um, China, the next path is going to try to achieve common prosperity. What does it mean by uh, common prosperity? The idea is not new in China, but a sharp escalation in the official rhetoric and a crackdown on excesses in industries, including technology and private tuition, has record uh, investors in the world's second largest economy. She is turning towards inequality after concluding a campaign to eliminate the absolute poverty, pledging to make solid progress towards common prosperity by 2035 and basically achieve the goal by 2050. Uh, actually, they want to achieve the goal by 2049, which is the second 100 years of China's, um, what they call the second 100 years or the 100 years anniversary of the People's Republic of China. Uh, common prosperity was first introduced in the 50s by Mao Zedong, founding leader of, of what was then a very impoverished country and repeated in 1980 by Deng Xiaoping, who modernized an economy devastated by the Cultural Revolution. Deng said that allowing some people and regions to get rich first would speed up economic growth and help achieve the ultimate goal of common prosperity. This year, Xi Jinping signaled a heightened uh, commitment to delivering the common prosperity, emphasizing it is not just an economic objective, but the core to the party's governing foundation. Uh, officials say that the common prosperity is not egalitarianism. A senior party official said last month that common prosperity does not mean killing the rich to help the poor. The push for common prosperity has encompassed policies ranging from curbing tax evasion and limits on the hours that tech sector employees can work to ban on for profit tutoring in course good subjects and strict limits on the time miners can spend playing video games. So here we talk about two things that one is uh, cramming down on the tech sector's very long working hour. So uh, China want to have its citizens can have some uh, private time to enjoy their family. Now, the, the saying is 996. 996 is a term um, used, used by many um, people working in the tech sector in China. 99, nine, the first two nine means you start work at nine and finish work at nine. So 12 hours work. The last six means that is six days a week. So you can imagine you are in a 996 situation. Nine, nine, six, six, right. It's very bad. <laughs> we can't imagine that in Australia here. The other thing is, of course, we, we talk about a lot of so-called uh, tiger mother. That is the Chinese mothers forcing their children to take a lot of private lessons, including piano, dancing, uh, ballet, et cetera, et cetera. And at the same time, there are also a large number of parents pushing their children into uh, private tutoring uh, courses in order to boost up uh, their academic performance in order to get into uh, better universities, so to speak. So China is coming on that. Uh, all education services will have a fixed cost. So if you want to run a private 
a tutor, tutor uh, school. It must be, first of all, non-profit. Second of all, the fee will be standardized. You cannot charge more than the government uh, specify. And the way to, to achieve common prosperity is use uh, taxation and other income redistribution levers to expand the portion of middle income citizens, so-called middle class, uh, boost income of the poor, and then rationally adjust excessive income and ban illegal income. Ban, ban, ban the illegal income, that means you stop um, tax evasion. Beijing also explicitly encouraged high income firms and individuals to contribute more to society while the so-called third distribution, which refers to charity and donations. Okay, since it's talk about the third distribution, so I'll try to find out what is the first and the second distribution. So let's talk about the income distribution. The first distribution or the primary distribution. The primary distribution is uh, the economic benefits from economic activities will be distributed into the essential elements which enable the, the activities. For example, we have a firm. The firm will need uh, different uh, essential elements such as uh, know-how, um, capital, uh, land, um, technology, equipments, workers, management, etc. These are essential elements. When the firm make money, so the economic benefits will be distributed to the essential elements of that firm, including some benefits so go to the capital, some benefits go to the um, provider of the technology and know-how, some benefits go to the workers, some benefits go to the landowner, some benefits go to the uh, workers and so forth. So there's a distribution of the economic benefits of that uh, firm operating. In a capitalistic society, the, di di the distribution is dictated by the capital maximizing its profits while minimizing distribution to other essential elements such as workers. Because the primary owner of the um, economic activity, the capitalists, the people who own the firm, would de decide how to distribute the earning of that firm, the benefits from that economic activity. And they will try to maximize profit and by maximizing profit, that means the other elements, the more they can decrease the share of the other the essential elements, the more will be concentrated in the element of capital. Common prosperity seeks to a fair, equitable, and sustainable distribution. Uh, again, all these terms are subject to discussion. What do you mean by fair? What do you mean by mean by equitable, what mean by sustainable? Is there unsustainable distribution at the moment? Yes, there are examples of that one. For example, in the United States, in some um, large uh, cha food chain, for example, McDonald's, they pay their workers minimum wage. And at that minimum wage, the worker is not able to sustain their own family. For example, you have a family of four, you have two people working for McDonald's. The full-time work of that two person together is not able to sustain their family for people's expenses. So a lot of this family have to depend on what they call the food stamp. Basically is a uh, welfare system to provide food for the government. And therefore to McDonald's, it is, using external subsidy to sustain its workers, the welfare. The workers depends on who puts them. If McDonald's have paid more to the, to the workers, then the workers will not need to depend on the uh, food stamps. So that will, that will make it sustainable. Whether at the moment it is sustainable or not, we don't know. If the government change policy, 
and the, their workers go hungry, they can't work, then they will face the problem of no employees. And this is what is facing the American society at the moment. With the COVID, the government has some handouts. With their handouts, people is better off based on the handouts than to work. And therefore, people doesn't want to work. And China sees this primary distribution as a key to achieve efficiency. So China is not going to touch this first primary distribution too much. They will leave it alone and let the system run as is efficient, where the, the pitch efficient. But obviously, we'll try to be, uh, make it more fair, equitable, and sustainable. So that is the primary distribution. The secondary distribution, or known as the redistribution, is via the, fam uh, the government. The government um, provide activities such as maintenance of the society, uh, society safety, um, legal environment, so that we, we know that we, we do not, we will not be, um, we, are, we do not have to worry about um, thefts or crime and so forth, safety, education, health, environment, transportation, welfare, et cetera, et cetera. All these services is a economic benefits to somebody. And these economic benefits need resources to drive and that is the tax. Uh, funded by direct and indirect taxes collected by both from corporations and individuals. So the government try to collect some of the primary benefits which have been distributed to different elements, corporation, profit, uh, individual um, workers, individual tax, and also through indirect tax. Government is collecting a lot of resources back. So the whole country's uh, economic activities is being collected through tax into the hand of the government. And the government, through the provision of services, we distribute this economic benefits to the other part of the society. The state-owned enterprise is another re revenue source for re redistribution. Now, we seldom think of this in our more Western societies, but in Chinese society, it has always been one method of the state or the government to generate income. And that income, again, will be uh, channeled back to distribute to the society by providing uh, government services. But the problem is, again, when all the government collected so, so, uh, resources, the, so the, uh, the, the economic benefits, are only used for its leader through extravagant uh, luxury lifestyle of the leaders, then there's a very obvious unfairness because the, as the society collect all the, all the tax, it is the uh, economic output of the citizens. And you collect all this economic output and use it only onto yourself and not back to the, back to the uh, economy, back to the society, then it is not the redistribution, it is um, exploitation. So redistribution and exploitation has to be uh, carefully uh, uh, considered here. The third is uh, the third distribution. The third distribution refers to all the high income firms and individuals contribute directly back to the society via so-called the uh, donation and charities. Then different organizations and form their charity and to address some of the population which the government may not have addressed because government work on a very broad stroke level. You, you, need, you have a policy, the policy will apply to everybody. So it is a very um, broad category, whereas uh, individual charity can focus on special area of interest. For example, Heart Foundation, they will focus on heart-related research. And 
Okay, of course, the heart foundations uh, output will be beneficial to the whole country or even humanity. But the government may not be able to just focus on just heart, the heart foundation. They have to focus on the heart foundation and then the other kinds, the breast cancer, the uh, prostate cancer. So there's a whole lot of other, other. So the government can only do that on a broad level, whereas individual charity can focus on this one. And there's another obligation in China for the rich is to help the other people to get rich because Deng Xiaoping said, let somebody get rich first. And then there's another sentence. After you get rich, have those who follows you <laughs> to get rich in order to make sure that everybody have a common, uh, common prosperity. Okay, so there's uh, uh, impact. Okay, the impact is that um, by having a common prosperity, hopefully uh, it, it will not be a large group of poor people rather than a large group of middle class. What they are looking at is a olive side, olive distribution of wealth. That means many, a little bit of people very rich, a little people very poor, most of the people in the middle is a is an old leaf shape. It will have a stable society because everybody uh, will be will not need to compare with each other. We are all about the same same wealth. Uh, lower economic in, in equality, and hopefully will enable to have a robust internal circulation so that the Chinese um, economic activity will not solely depend on export, which um, in the last um, 40 years, China has depends on export activity to grow its uh, GDP. But now they're switching over to a so-called dual circulation idea. One is a domestic circulation. That means economic activities to serve the people in China. And then another external circulation is economic activities are interacting with the rest of the world. So uh, two circulations. The larger the middle class, the more ability to generate consumption. And by generating consumption, you stimulate uh, industrial activities. In that by, by default, in, in the industrial activities, mass produce um, consumables. You know, consumables are not being consumed by the consumers. Then your industrial activity will stop and then the, your innovation, the, the continuous uh, improvement of your production process will stop because the uh, industry do not have income to sustain its uh, research and development. So you, when you want to improve society, you, you have to make sure different elements in the society do make money. And some of that money is being used to continue to research and develop, to improve the process, to innovate in order to come up with new product. That depends on consumption. If you have a very small middle class, then either your product will be mainly focused on the poor, which doesn't need a lot of innovation, or you don't have a industrial driving the consumption. We need a large middle class, and that's where the common prosperity idea comes in. Okay, I will open up for discussion. Anyone, please unmute yourself. No? I thought this is a very controversial topic. So do you think, um, do you think China's becoming, uh, the wealth distribution is becoming more uneven as it is in the West? No, the, the whole objective of this common prosperity is what, wanting to reduce the inequality in wealth. Mm -hmm. 
but um, they, of course, they 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 are afraid that the the rich will escape, take the money and leave China. Yeah. So they, they say no, we are not robbing the rich. <laughs> we are making the poor richer or the middle class richer to catch up with you. Mm-hmm. So that's the rhetoric. Whether they can do or not, we don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Any any other question? Yes, please, please. Yeah. I've I've been to China twice. The first time for a long period, and that was actually in um, <clears throat> May into June in eighty nine. So it was actually the uh, over the period of the Tiananmen Square. Ah. At at that at that stage. So we were in the south a lot in different places and then <clears throat> then ended up being in Shanghai, not actually intending that and didn't get to Beijing. But every place we saw Shanghai certainly seemed basically a poor country at the time still. Yeah. Um, and then, and I just didn't imagine that the Chinese would come and visit my country, like I was able to visit them, in which I was completely wrong. But then I went 30 years later to Beijing and stayed with a Chinese couple who were living in a kind of gated community and in Beijing where I hadn't been before. And by that, at that stage, it seemed to me a country of great extremes because um, you know Beijing, we were close to shops selling extraordinarily um, luxurious items, clothing and food, and there were obviously a band of very rich people, but there were also people working in that gated community who had come from the country and who were far from rich, so there seemed to be a huge divide. So I'm surprised that you say that they've got so much attempt to have more egalitarianism because I thought the little bit I saw that second time and what I've read, I thought it's basically a capitalistic society and and I just wonder whether that redistribution and all that really is working strongly or not. I think they they start to work if you look at the Gini coefficient, uh, the the measurement of uh, wealth inequality, um, China has been dropping, and then in about 2010 started to rise again. I mean, the the income inequality, the in, the the wealth inequality increased over the last decade, while China is putting a lot of effort to. Uh, remove the extreme poverty. So that is a very strange um, then phenomenon. But at the moment, they are trying to uh, lower the Gini coefficient again, hopefully uh, go back to 10 years ago and then even lower. That's their objective. And that's why they call themselves uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics. Yeah. They, they refuse to refer themselves as capital, capitalistic. The capitalistic, <laughs> one of the the idea of capitalism is capitals um, maintain strong uh, control over the whole economy. Look at the uh, United States, um, the, their politicians in both, in both the Senate and the, and the uh, is that, what's that, the House of Common? common? No, they're not called, called House of Common. But anyway, the two, two um, uh, session, just like our House and, and the Senate, their politicians need a lot of money to get themselves elected. And this money all come from capital. And therefore, the policy have to uh, benefit the capital. And that means capital, capitalistic society um, policy is driven by capitalist demands. Whereas China try to try to get rid of this one. They refuse to let the rich rule the country. They yeah. want to maintain co- control of the country uh, by this CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. 
um, avoid inferences by capital. Um, of course, we hear, heard about a recent calm down on the big tech company. Uh, I think lot, yesterday I explained it, that was because uh, the China want to um, control the cyberspace. So it's nothing to do with this um, uh, income in redistribution. But lately they do crack down on a, on a few actors because they are evasion of tax. So that's another issue. And they want to uh, want to get the second uh, the redistribution working well. So they need funding. But unfortunately, for some of you in the United States, the, the redistribution is through printing money and making everybody pay for them, not only their own citizens. That's one thing I, I'm quite, quite opposed. You answer your question? More or less. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, Yes, please. Albert. Yes. Where does the detainment of someone like Jack Ma come into this, who's surely uh, been of benefit to to China as a whole, China's uh, yep. wealth and progress to the whole? I, I mean, detaining him and reining in his his power it isn't doesn't that go against um, the benefit of China, or is this purely? because of what you've just said, they're trying to retain control within the the, the, the Chinese communist organization. I mean, he's not alone. He's, there are others like that. Yeah, uh, Jack Ma is now free. Jack Ma, is he? Oh. Yeah, just we appear, I think, um, two days ago in, in the social media. So uh, what happened, uh, we don't know exactly because uh, Jack Ma haven't, um, given any public uh, speeches, etc. But he will appear. Okay, people have seen him up, uh, appearing in uh, his his neighborhood. Uh, so he's no longer being detained or controlled. Uh, in China, there are two two types of detention. One is um, executive control. So you are not committing a crime, but uh, you need to be somewhere under control of, for example, an authority in order to help with some kind of investigation and something like that. That's called executive, executive control. I think Jack Ma is under executive control for a while. He's not under detention. Uh, the, in Chinese, the detention means you have committed a crime and the initial evidence uh, is sufficient to give you a detention, just like uh, our, our legal system, you, you will be charged. But slightly different from our system is uh, we, on, we can only, um, uh, no, we, we can also do that as well. Now, when the, when the police in, is investigating a crime and you are, and say you, I'm a, chief suspect, how long can our police um, put me into custody? I think it's 48 hours, is that right, in, in here? Yeah, 24, 48. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but China, that time is much longer. <laughs> it's not only 48 hours, it's approximately 30 days during that investigation period. <coughs> Uh, yeah, here now, if they think you're a terrorist and they don't have to say why, um, they think that you can be held for quite a long while without anyone ever knowing what's happened to you. Yeah. The laws have changed. Yeah. Uh, for example, in, in prisons outside the United States as well. Yeah. But so. it's for terrorists. But for yeah. ordinary people in, in China, they, their detention... Uh, two, as I said, it's two types. One is executive uh, control. That means you are not allowed. You you are no longer free to go everywhere, no. but you are not being charged. Another one is uh, legal detention. That means uh, you are very likely to be charged. Uh, you are being investigated, and during that period, just like here, we have a forty-eight hours. But 
in China is about 30 days. So there's a bit different there. Uh, Jack Ma is under executive control rather than detention. Uh, he is now free. But the, surely, Jack, you, you don't want to stifle the entrepreneurship of someone like Jack Ma, who's yeah, surely uh, provide is of benefit to the Chinese economy. Yes, and... yeah. The, there is another issue Chinese is now trying to work with Alibaba. Yeah. It is, is um, monopoly, monopolistic practices. Uh, Alibaba or Taobao represent about 60% of Chinese online market. Right. And they only accept Alipay or uh, Visa or credit payments. They do not accept uh, the me uh, way about a uh, pay because maybe is from another company from 10 cent and the government said no you you can't reject other types of payment you cannot only use uh alipay and that is one of the one of the issue um alibaba is being investigated against uh, this kind of what they call a uh, mono monopolistic practice they don't want them to be monopolized by their size or economy. So they want fair, fair competition with other company. For example, uh, online payment. At the moment, Ali, Ali, Alibaba, you, you buy it on uh, Taobao or Alibaba or AliExpress here. You can either use credit card or use Alipay. You can't use the other, other online payment system. The Chinese government say, no. You have to accept other payment system. <laughs> okay. Just remember, China's legal system basically started working only 70 years ago when they established the People's Republic of China. And then mm -hmm. the, the laws are being drafted progressively. So we will see a lot more, more uh, Regulations being drafted, trying to uh, mobilize China. But you're right. Um, innovation is a very difficult thing to 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 encourage. You need an environment where people have very uh, low uh, cost of failure, but very high profit of uh, success then you will have a very strong innovation environment. But any failure, is there's a cost. The, the problem is how to uh, protect those who innovate and keep on innovating because not everybody's first innovation is a success. Mm. Many, many innovations will die when only one will be very successful. So I think innovation had another, another big topic. I don't know whether I have the ability to address that or not, but maybe I, I can do a research and see whether I can come up with something. Um, Albert, you have competition with that show on the ABC, China Tonight, which is on Tuesday nights. Okay. Well, you can pick it up on iView. Yep, I will pick it up. Oh, China iView. Tonight, and they talked a lot about how the government is uh, trying to regulate so that... Uh, children and adolescents don't spend so much time playing computer games. Yep. Yeah. The current regulation <laughs> is uh, a under, I think under six, 16 or 18, whatever, um, they only can play three hours of uh, online games. Per week. Per week. Per yeah. week, three hours per week, not three hours per day. Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at, at eight to nine. Yeah. No That's other time it. to not only. They've, they've made the game companies um, do it, work out how to do it, how to you know, make and it happen. That. But uh, I think a few of our parents in Australia wouldn't mind a rule like that. Yep. Uh, doing it at a government level, actually, uh, most of the parents supported that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they would here. Yeah. Interesting. 
And yeah. <laughs> whether it's good or not, I think it all depends on, on, on point of view, I suppose. But yeah. <laughs> mm. But it's a good show to watch. China yeah. tonight, they've almost taken your title. <laughs> yes, I think the title was suggested by you. Can't remember. <laughs> Long time ago. Okay, anyway. Anyone else? Oh, I thought this is a very controversial topic. We will, we might have a more di more discussions. Oh. Well, what about comparing China's approach? What about here? Do we want one? Do we can we see a lot more secondary distribution here? We we obviously we have some third distribution. We have a lot of charities. Okay. A lot of our hospitals depends on quite a bit of charity. Mm. Whether it's good or not, we don't know because um, charity is not sustainable it's on, mm. unless you have a specific uh, funding to do it. But uh, secondary distribution can be sustainable. The government can commit. And then the other model is, for example, moving into the insurance model like our disability benefit scheme. Mm. So there's another way to do it. Uh, I think China will obviously also look at that, that approach as well, mm. especially in terms of health, age care, disability, mm. and so forth. This can be used. Mm. At, you, uh, age is also an issue. Uh, at the moment, we hear mm. the age has a minimum a government pension. So you, you, if you're on a government pension, you just can live by. Mm -hmm. But China want to uh, raise up the, the, um, the government pension so that people can live much more comfortably and in dignity. So that is, again, a socialist government versus a capitalist government's point of view. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. Was no more question? We're living at home in lockdown. Oops, we don't get many uh, chances to develop it, ideas. We just is, th is this the last week of the term or what? It is. Yes, yeah. yes, the end so, of this Friday is the end of term. Okay, so that means we will see you again in two weeks' time. Two weeks. After time. two weeks. Will yes. we <laughs> use this link or will there yeah, be a new link? Same link. Same link. Same link. And I think I will continue this link into next year as well. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Don't be so miserable. We're all going to get out by November because we'll all be vaccinated and they're letting the disease rip. But Singapore have a need, have a we study coming out. 80% yeah. vaccination doesn't stop the virus. No. They're, they're 80% and they're going to do the children next. Yeah. Because the children are the spreaders. Uh, the children is spreader. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, they when they get the children down. Yeah. But my son's been stranded in Singapore with his family for two years now. And um, his kids have only missed about three weeks of school. Oh, very In that good. whole time. So they've been better off up there than down here. Yeah. But no one can hold the Delta virus. If the Singaporeans can't, no one can. Well, uh, the Chinese can. Well, maybe. I don't know. Chinese has a run of that one uh, for yeah. 30 days. The One of the uh, Delta vi uh, virus uh, slipped through in the Shanghai airport. Yeah. And then spread to about 12 provinces. Yeah. They crammed down heavily. And then within 30 days, the virus is gone. China is now virus free yeah. at, the, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Singapore, I think, was talking about going down into another quick lockdown again. Uh, I guess Singapore used a lot more guest workers. Read for that, poor Malaysians yeah. <laughs> and Filipino maids. So, so they have a bit of trouble. By the way, hopefully. The, the solution to that one is the world determined one month. Yep. The whole world clamped down. Yeah. 
but they won't do that. Then we solve the problem. But unfortunately, we won't do that. They won't do that. It'll be a vaccination, you know, medicine issue in the end. The medicine, the, the vaccination doesn't solve the problem. The meal is coming. The <laughs> next virus. Stop that. Stop that. We're coming out in November. I got ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that we can come out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> See you later. See okay. you in term three. See you in. Thank you, Albert. You said ter term, term three or term four? four. Term four. four. Yes, we are coming to the term four. Yeah. See you in term four. Okay. And Bye, remember, everybody. you don't have to count that last year of your life in your total, Albert. Because <laughs> it was in lockdown. Doesn't count. Two years. Doesn't count. <laughs> okay. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Elvis. Thank you. Bye-bye.